to tell you a little bit about uh, Captain Higgins, I'll tell you about myself. So I was born in 1830 in Ireland. Uh, my family moved to Michigan in 1848, and I joined the military. And uh, as part of the military, I served under uh, Governor Isaac Stevens' uh, survey of 1853. I was the wagon boss, and what we were doing is we were you know, laying out surveying where the Northern Pacific would eventually be, be located. And in 1855, we were back in this very same area uh, to negotiate with the Flatheads, keep peace between the Flatheads and the Blackfeet Indians. And I'm very proud of the fact that I managed to save Governor Stevens' life that very year. It was on July 4th. 1855, we were coming down the Bitterroot River. The entire expedition, we were on three rafts, big, ungainly things, uh, and we were poling them as, as you handle rafts, of course. The governor and I were in the third one, the largest one, and it got out of control. And it started heading towards the, uh, the, 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 ra the, the, yeah, the rapids. So, I grabbed one of the tow ropes, I jumped into the river, swam ashore, ran alongside the raft until I came to a tree where I could wrap the rope around it, which swung the raft to the shore and saved the governor's life. And five days later, oh, thank you. Yeah. And five days later, we, can, we concluded our negotiations with the Flathead uh, at Council Groves. Uh, that uh, kept peace there, and also uh, the Flatheads agreed that they would eventually resettle to one location. At that point, not determined, it could have been the Bitterroot, or the Jocko Valley. But it was while I was here that I recognized the great trading potential in western Montana. And in 1860, I resigned my commission, left the military. I bought out the Isaacs interest of the Walla Walla store called Warden and Isaacs, convinced my new partner, Mr. Warden, who you might have visited already. I convinced him that we should sell out in Walla Walla moved to western Montana. This we did, and in 1860 we put everything we owned on 76 pack animals. And pity the one who was carrying the very first safe ever used in western Montana. This was a safe that had five inch thick steel walls. Pity the mule pulling that one. We also came, not meaning to you know, make any comparisons with mules, but we also came with our clerk, Frank Woody who eventually became a judge and the first mayor of the city of Missoula. And uh, he was here last year, but I don't think he's here this year, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, we set up about four miles from here, uh, about four miles uh, a little bit west here, and we started the town of Hellgate. We built our first uh, store, operating out of a tent first, then a small store about 16 by 18 feet, uh, and it became the nexus of all activity in western Montana. It's, you know, you had the, the uh, Flathead up in the Bitterroot. You had the Flathead and some of the other Indians up to the north in the Jocko Valley. And you had the Mullen Road going east-west. So this is where everything had to come. It was going through western Montana. And as such, we, uh, a couple years later, 1864, we decided that we needed to build a sawmill and a grist mill. And to do this, we moved about four miles up the river where the rattlesnake now comes into the Clark Fork. That's where we built our, our mill. And within five years, the town of Hellgate disappeared as everything moved four miles to what I called Missoula Mills. And I drew up the very first plot for Missoula Mills, and I am on a quest to have the maps changed back to the way they should be. This should be Missoula Mills. And I, I will speak to the next mayor to make sure that's part of his or her agenda. Uh, the, um, we had some uh, a little bit of activity in Hellgate in 1864. Uh, the vigilantes, you may have heard of those. Uh, they managed to chase four of Plummer's gang to the Missoula Valley, and they caught them and they hung them in my corral. Justice could be swift in western Montana back then. Uh, that was not the only hanging that took place. Uh, it, my son, Morris, 
Uh, this was after I died in 1889. My son, Morris, uh, was murdered. And uh, what happened was there was a great fire in 1892 in Missoula. Started in a bar, spread eventually to 20 different localities. And uh, actually it started Mary Glime, who I believe is here. Mary Glime and I did not really see eye to eye. Uh, I had entirely different views of what Missoula should be than what uh, the Mary Glime had. But anyway, the fire started, and at the same time, these two ruffians by the name of Mr. Lyons and Mr. Burns uh, had a conflict with a Mr. Goldenboggin. Now, Mr. Goldenboggin claimed that these two gentlemen had stolen his pocket watch. And indeed, when Mr. Lyons was apprehended, he had the watch on him. So Mr. Lyons was arrested and placed in our jail. Mr. Burns took exception with this and challenged Mr. Goldenboggin, and they had a gunfight behind the blue front bar on Front Street. Well, as most Western fights, it was very inefficiently done. There was gunfire. Mr. Goldenboggin eventually took a shot in the side, and he started running away. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Well, at the same time, my son, Morris, and a couple of his friends, running downtown to help fight the fire, came upon that, heard the gunfire. Mr. Goldenboggin runs by. Mr. Burns turns the corner and fires after Mr. Goldenboggin, just as Morris turns to see what's going on. Morris takes a bullet right between the eyes. He doesn't die immediately, he's taken home. Uh, the doctors tried to remove the bullet from the back of his head. Uh, fortunately, I think, Morris never did regain consciousness. He died that evening. But the name Higgins meant so much to Missoulians that they were ready to lynch Mr. Burns. Uh, the sheriff just barely managed to prevent that from happening. And instead, we hung Mr. Burns legally two months later. But justice, again, could be swift back in those days. Now, that's one of my children. We, I, had, I had nine children. Uh, and you're probably familiar with most of their names. If you're familiar with the university area, you know Arthur, Helen, Hilda, Ronald, and Gerald. Five of my children. The other four should have their names uh, in the university section, but in order to help get the university here to Missoula, I gave a lot of land to what became the university, and they took those names. My eldest son, Frank Francis, should be the street that's closest to, the, uh, to Mount Sentinel, at the base of Mount Sentinel. Then there should be George, John, and Morris then you would have Arthur. So four of my children do not have streets named after them, although they should. Any questions? If not, I can just start up again.